Hello again, everyone. This is Patrick Wade with the Champaign County Joint Information Center back with another virtual session. Uh, today, we took some of the questions that we've been getting from the public over the past few days, and we're going to be asking our local community experts uh, for some of those answers. So I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, we'll start with Julie Pride, the Champaign-Urbana Public Health Administrator. Julie, you've mentioned uh, this idea of contact tracing. We are wondering how that works and how might someone know if they've come into cl close contact with someone who is sick. When anyone tests positive for a communicable disease and the disease is reportable, that information goes to the local public health department. When we receive a positive case of someone with coronavirus, our communicable disease investigators reach out to that person and provide an interview with them to try to determine anyone that they have had close contact with from 48 hours prior to symptom onset. We use all kinds of little tricks to help jog their memory of what they were doing and who they were around in that time period. What we are looking for is anyone who has had close contact with that individual when they were possibly infectious. With coronavirus disease, what we are looking at is a person who has had close contact is defined as six feet within six feet of that person for at least 10 minutes. When we determine who all those individuals are, we then reach out to those individuals and talk to them about their risks and about what they have been doing. We check to see if they have any symptoms. If they do have symptoms, we put them in quarantine for at least 14 days. If they do not have any symptoms, we ask them to self-monitor themselves for at least two times a day, checking for symptoms of coronavirus disease. We also reach out to all persons in isolation and quarantine two times a day for the entire duration that they're in there. All right, thanks, Julie. Next, we're gonna to go to Dr. John Kreckman, who is the Chief Medical Officer at OSF Heart of Mary Medical Center. Uh, Dr. Kreckman, what are you doing to keep healthcare workers and patients safe? We have instituted universal screening for our staff, as well as the patients and the providers to check them every day. We've instituted universal self-monitoring, so all of our staff is checking their temperatures twice a day. We've also set up for triage, which is the tents many of you have seen outside of the buildings to help identify concerns before they come into the building so that we can handle them in the most appropriate manner. Uh, we've also restricted visitor access as well as access to the building in general. Once again, just to control the flow of patients and the risk of contamination. In addition, we, uh, we've been following the CDC guidelines uh, very carefully and closely on the uh, use of personal protective equipment and, and maintaining an adequate supply of that equipment. And then we have, provide, we have continued to provide and uh, educate our, our staff uh, and the community um, on our, as the situation uh, uh, changes. We have, a, we have a group of highly trained professionals and more often than not, as you know, it's, it's not learning something new, but relearning and remembering what you already knew. So that's just, that is part of the education process. So hospital treats, hospitals treat uh, patients with infectious disease every day, and we are prepared for this. We are here for the community and our mission partners at OSF Healthcare Heart of Mary. Thank you, Dr. Kreckman. So next we'll go to Dr. Chuck Dennis, who's the Chief Medical Officer at Carl. Uh, Dr. Dennis, same thing. How are you uh, keeping healthcare workers and patients safe? And also, how are you implementing some of these social distancing measures into your operations? Well, uh, obviously the safety of our uh, patients and our uh, uh, staff are at our utmost uh, concern at the, this point in time more than any other. And so we've been working really uh, over the past several weeks and managing uh, how we do that in an effective way. Uh, from a social distancing standpoint, we've already uh, had people working at home when they are able to, obviously in direct care uh, patient care responsibilities, that's really not possible. Uh, but for those uh, patients, we've tried, uh, for those uh, staff members, we tried to conserve uh, the usage of our PPE to maximally protect those individuals. We've created uh, uh, opportunities to uh, uh, reuse them through sterilization processes that we've uh, created through um, uh, what we understand uh, as safe scientific processes out in the community, as well as uh, some guidance from the university. 
Uh, we've gotten a lot of donations for protective equipment from uh, our partners in uh, the community. Um, and we're ordering as many additional supplies as we can uh, get in the marketplace to meet our needs. So can you tell us a little bit more about how you're incorporating social distancing into the healthcare setting and uh, what people might notice walking through the halls or how their interactions with providers might be a little bit different? Uh, yeah, so uh, we have um, staff, as I said, performing duties at home when they're able to. Uh, we've suspended events, uh, both group uh, educational events and encouraged uh, the change to more virtual meetings if, if possible. We've, been, we've had patients who are not required uh, to come into the hospital for emergencies or urgent care to stay at home, and we're setting up uh, processes to, to take care of them over the phone or via video, and that way we can care for their needs um, without them being exposed uh, to uh, the healthcare environment unnecessarily. Um, there, then the others, uh, the team members like the social workers, chaplains, dietitians, environmental services are encouraged to practice uh, social distancing in the counters with their patients. So you may see them uh, at the door of a hospital room or you may, may see them behind a desk. Uh, uh, and we're doing that to both uh, for the safety of the individual staff members as well as uh, the patients that they're serving. All right, thank you, Dr. Dennis. And lastly, uh, we'd like to hear from Champaign County Sheriff Dustin Harmon. Uh, Sheriff Harmon, can you tell me, with the governor's order in place, what are we expecting from the community as far as social distancing, and what can we do to sort of make sure people are following those rules? Under this order, you should stay at home as much as possible and only leave for the essential things such as stocking up on groceries or going to seek medical assistance. It is fine to take a walk around your neighborhood or garden in your backyard. Just stay at least six feet away from others while you're doing it. You might have to wait a little bit longer before you host that neighborhood barbecue though. It is currently not the intent of local law enforcement to go to houses or other areas to enforce compliance with social distancing. We are, however, calling on adults to make adult decisions for themselves and their dependents regarding appropriate social distancing and congregating. If you are found on public property, that has been closed to the governor's order, such as playgrounds or state parks, you could face a fine. Law enforcement is also not tasked with determining what is an essential versus non-essential business. We are working closely with the public health district though to make sure businesses are aware of the governor's executive order and also aware of the potential consequences of failing to comply with that order, which could include the loss of food and beverage licenses, as well as the loss of the ability to operate. Remember that our goal is to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 and we can only successfully do that by working together. These measures are necessary because not everyone who is spreading the virus has symptoms. I ask you to please help keep both of our families safe by adhering to the restrictions laid out by the CU Public Health District and the state of Illinois. We will get through this together. All right, thank you, Sheriff Harmon. That's gonna do it for today, but we'll be back soon with some additional updates. Just a couple closing notes. Uh, we've launched a website at champaigncountycovid19.org. That website has a lot of useful information and resources. And then uh, just keep following Champaign-Urbana Public Health District on Facebook and Twitter. That's where we're gonna be posting these updates um, and other useful information. And lastly, if you have any topics that you wanna see us cover in the future, just let us know in the comments and we'll check that out. So uh, that's it for now. Keep staying informed, keep staying safe, uh, stay in good spirits, and let us know if there's anything we can do to help you. We'll see you next time. Thank you.